I procedurally generated some alien floating islands using voxels and Godot, and then I populated the world with flying creatures which display flocking behavior. So the voxel generation I wrote divides the map up into 16 by 16 by 64 chunks of blocks. I started by making each chunk into a double cone using the equation for the surface of a cone. I fiddled with the a, b, and c values and added offsets to x, y, and z and then limited it to making single cones. This gave me cones with different sizes and positions within their respective chunks. If a cone was to be generated below a certain size threshold, I simply don't generate it at all, which gives some empty space in the map. I drew up some block textures for alien terrain and flora, and set some rules for what would generate where. With the map generation complete, I wanted to populate the world with some kind of creature. I've always wanted to implement voids, so uh, I did that. Voids are this artificial life thing created by this one guy, Craig Reynolds. He wrote a paper describing bird-like or bird-oid objects, which can simulate flocking behavior by imposing three rules on each member of a flock. Other people have explained this much better than I ever could, so I'll just skim over it. The three rules are uh, 1. Separation. Avoid getting too close to nearby flockmates. 2. Alignment. Align velocity to the average heading of nearby flockmates and three, cohesion, move towards the center of mass of local flockmates. So here's my code implementation. First we loop through all the voids. The variable n will be equal to how many other voids the current one is flocking with. I've set up an is flocking variable so I can temporarily disable flocking behavior for a void. Currently I do this when a void hits a wall so that it can you know just bounce off the wall and then resume flocking later. Now I loop through all the voids again. If two voids are within a set radius of each other, I count the new void as a flockmate. The separation is applied as a force that is inversely proportional to to distance so that the void prioritizes moving away from flockmates the closer they are. The alignment takes the normalized velocity vector from the other void. This is simply the direction it is moving in without caring about the speed. For the cohesion rule, I am adding up the positions of all flockmates. Later, when I divide it by the number of flockmates, I get essentially the center of mass of the flock. Each of the three forces are modified by some weights. This way I can modify which rules are more important to the flock. Finally, I added in a fourth rule, where the flock is encouraged to stay within a certain radius of a given location of interest. I set this equal to the player's position for demonstration purposes, so that the voids don't just fly off into the void. Here they are flying around in the world that I generated earlier. Uh, this was of course really inspired by the Half-Life Zen levels, which also implemented voids for some flocking creatures. I'd love to put some footage of Half-Life here, but whenever I load into the game, when I try to go to the Zen levels, I spawn in with no weapons, and I do not possess the ability to long jump, uh, meaning that I cannot complete any of the levels. I immediately fall into the void and die, so I can't actually find any voids, but uh, they exist, I, I, I swear, I, I swear. Anyway, my triangles don't look too interesting, so I opened up Blender and got to work on making some sort of flying abomination. I am very bad at art, uh, but it looks slightly more interesting. I had never used vertex shaders before, so I decided to give that a shot as well. Here I'm using a cosine function to make the wings flap. I take the absolute value of the x position of each vertex to have it be symmetric across the yz plane, and I only apply the function past a certain x value so that only the wings are flapping. I'm also using a shader on an inverted sphere around the player's head to make the sky not just be a solid color. I think this would be more efficient if I just put it on like a rectangle place right in front of the viewport of the camera, but I, 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 didn't, I didn't do that. I, I, I don't know. I use a bunch of random noise sampling to achieve the strange background texture I have going on. I also tried using random noise to make the voids look a bit more interesting. Here I am sampling points on a noise texture based on the x and z coordinates of the void mesh. Then I use these noise values to get coordinates to sample noise from another texture, which I modify the void's appearance with. The result of you know, using noise values to get more noise values is this sort of fractal noise pattern. Here I have two types of voids flying around with different models. I gave them each different weights for their flocking behavior. The smaller voids fly in more compact flocks, while the larger ones are more spread out but in smaller groups. I did run into a lot of issues with this. Godot, Godot really liked crashing a lot because of my terrible, terrible code. There were also a few like weird off by one errors where the voids would just fly off into the void and not care about the rest of their flocking behavior. A few times uh, I had this going on 
where if two voids were super, super close to each other, where the distance was very close to zero, when I am applying the separation force, I am essentially dividing by zero. So I was getting just a ton of not a number errors where Godot was screaming at me for doing that. So that was fun. Uh, it worked. It worked eventually. Anyway, that's it. Currently, the two types of creatures don't interact with each other, so that could be something interesting for me to look into in the future. I'll end this uh, with some footage of them just flying around.